Hey, what's up you guys, Zoll here, and today I kind of wanted to make this video that I will admit is geared more towards the high schoolers, community college students, and even people who are looking to transfer schools because I want to talk about if the college you pick actually matters for a chemistry major. Because this is really dependent on different majors, and a lot of people don't realize that because they just look at different rankings list and all, and they think that goes for every major at the school. But some schools are way better for certain majors, and some schools, like, if you're getting a major in that area, it hardly matters what school you go to. So I want to go over a bunch of different aspects of sort of the chemistry major, and if the school you pick and go to actually matters in the undergrad chemistry major. I'm taking info from all the research I've done online, people I've talked to who all have gone to different schools, and even my own experience at my undergrad institution and taking classes over the summer at different places, etc. And I kind of want to wrap this into a video and go through the basics of if the school you go to actually matters for undergrad and with that, let's hop right into it. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is course content. And this is actually a huge thing, because a lot of the times people think they're going to get wildly different course content depending on the school. But the ACS, which is the American Chemical Society, actually has like degree certifications. And so because of this, a lot of the content of the base core classes is pretty similar. That being said, there might be slight differences depending on the professor, school, and department guidelines. So every school as a base will cover the same course content because of these ACS guidelines. That is, if it's an ACS certified school with a degree that's ACS certified, etc. But so you're going to be covering the same sort of stuff in all these courses. It's not like if you go and take Gen Chem at one school and go take it at another school, they're going to be wildly different. Especially for the base courses like Gen Chem and OChem, the courses are going to be pretty, pretty similar for these course classes. And you're going to go over the same basic concepts in these core chemistry classes because every chemist is going to need to know these concepts. With that, even if the content is all the same, the academic rigor of the course content can hugely vary on the school. Because one school might cover just the base stuff that's required for the degree, but another school might shove some extra stuff in there that's not required for the ACS certified degree. And you might have to go over more complicated problems on your exams, even if they're on the same topic area, and harder homework, projects, etc. So academic rigor can be wildly different between schools, and that's something you just have to research for yourself, either by looking stuff up online or talking to people who go to that school in that department, because some schools are just way less rigorous, and this can actually come into play later when you're actually looking at what people think of majors coming out of certain schools. The next thing I want to talk about is a breakaway from the normal core classes, and this is kind of where the differences between universities really becomes apparent, and that is any elective or outside core content classes. Because all the schools that have this chem major are going to have the basic same classes. You're going to have your gen chems, O chems, P chem, etc. Because you need those classes to graduate the chemistry major. But not every school is going to have a bunch of electives. Not every school is going to offer advanced O chems, advanced P chems. Not every school is going to have polymer science classes or organic synthesis classes. And so if you're interested in a certain subject area and one school doesn't have any of these extra courses, say like in polymer science, and another different institution offers a whole ton of polymer science courses, you're obviously going to be a better fit for this other school. And you have to look at the specific departments of the schools and look at what course offerings they have. Because even if two schools offer the same degree, the electives you need for that degree, or maybe even just electives you're interested in, can be wildly different. You can go to a school that has a chem major and has the basic stuff and is ACS certified and all, but they don't have any cool electives. You're not going to get extra training on other instrumentation or other subject areas or even deeper training in advanced levels of classes. So that's really important if you're interested in a certain area of chemistry to look this up beforehand. Now, another big thing is the actual teaching that's going to happen in your classes. 
Even if courses all have the same content, a professor can make or break a class. And at a lot of bigger schools, you have these lower level undergraduate classes that are actually taught by grad students and you're hardly going to be able to interact with a professor. And if that doesn't work for you and you don't think you're getting your money's worth for that, be sure to note that in your thing. Because a lot of the times it can be way better to learn from a professor. If you go and ask questions in class, professors usually have a better grasp of the material, they can give you more examples, they just have more experience in general, and if you're interested in a certain subject area of the class, you can go and ask questions in class or in office hours to that professor about that specific material. Of course you're going to be able to contact your actual professor at these bigger institutions, but your one-on-one -on -one interaction with a professor can be super important for learning, especially in these lower classes. And if you really like being able to have that one-on-one -on -one information and just getting everything you can from a professor, maybe these bigger schools that have graduate students teaching classes might not be a fit for you. And in that case, it really matters what school you go to for your chemistry major. Next thing on the list is the research. A lot of schools will offer a base chemistry degree. Not a lot of schools can get you into good undergraduate research, and research is the bread and butter of any resume. If you're planning to go to grad school, if you're planning to apply for a job, the things you're going to be doing in both of those are research. And if your school doesn't have good research, you don't even have the opportunity to get that on your resume. You might be able to do some individually focused research, but some good research under a well-known professor who has published papers and all, who might help you publish your own papers, is like a golden ticket on a resume. So be sure you know about all the research going on at your school, because a school who does a lot of research and forces their undergrads, forces their undergrads to get into research, is going to be astronomically better on your resume, because having a couple of years of uh, actual academic research on that is golden. It's way better training than any of the classes can offer you. So, if a school has research and is very focused on research, and another school has almost no research or you can just do student stuff, you want to go to the heavy research school because getting into research is that important. Teacher recommendations, especially if you're planning to go to grad school or even for a job, are really important. And when you have these bigger classes, you are going to have a less of a relationship with that professor. And if you can get into research, you're going to be working with that professor day to day. Both of these things factor into getting really good teacher recommendations, especially if the school has really top tier professors. So it is kind of important that you make those relationships with professors because recommendations can be everything. Grades, especially in STEM, can be a bit deflated and they're really hard kind of get a sense of the whole picture of the student for job or grad applications. When you have research or you've published something or you have a good professor recommendation, that's what gives people a view of sort of what type of person, what type of researcher and student and worker you are. And that's what gets you into places. Lastly is just be sure to check your rankings because all of the rankings for these schools can be based off grad school rankings and just because something's a good grad school doesn't necessarily mean it's a good undergrad school. And a good undergrad school will have a lot of those things I listed before, while a good grad school might not have some of those things. Like a really good grad school might not might have those big classes and all, but what you're doing in grad school is research. You're not going to be taking those huge classes, so that's going to matter less to you. Meanwhile, if you're going to that place for undergrad and you want those smaller classes and that relationship with a professor, you need to watch out for that because that's what you need to learn. That's how you're going to get the most out of your college experience and learn the most about chemistry. So I will say kind of as a conclusion to this video that the college you go to for chemistry does matter. But it doesn't matter in the sense that you need to go to this Ivy League school to be a successful chemist. Plenty of people go to small state schools and they're great chemists and they go to amazing grad schools and do great things in their career. The more uh, relevant thing for chemistry is kind of the type. Does your school do research? Does it have these massive grad student taught classes? Does it have the electives you want for the area of interest you have? And stuff like that, which isn't necessarily a contingent on the rating of the school. Stuff like having really good professors with lots of great research and maybe renowned professors 
the, those are, of course, are going to be more common at higher tier schools. But that's not what I'm saying. You, for all this other stuff, you need to kind of just be sure that the chemistry department at the school you're going to has the stuff you want. And if you don't care about certain things, that's fine. But make sure you're doing research into specific chemistry departments of the college and specifically the undergrad experience at those departments because base ratings of schools don't tell the whole story. With that, I hope the video was helpful and I'll see you guys next time.